In this video, I will talk about five things you probably didn't know about institutional trading. There is a tremendous amount of misconception and incorrect ideas floating around the internet when it comes to the institutional trading domain, so I feel it's my, my responsibility to shed light on a few aspects of this incredibly interesting part of trading. Number one, institutional trading is mostly done using the derivatives market, which is composed by options and futures. The derivatives market is many times larger than the stock market. According to John Hall, which is known to be a reference in the derivatives domain, if we measure the total amount of circulating derivatives in the world, it easily surpasses the global GDP. You probably heard that the foreign exchange market is huge, but the derivatives market is even larger. In 2008, the size of the stock market was about $80 trillion while the derivatives market was floating around $700 trillion. Just so you can have an idea of how insane that is, the current global GDP, which is the gross domestic product of all countries combined, is around $80 trillion. In other words, the, deriv the derivatives market is extremely large, and with good reason, since the global banking system uses this type of market to move risk around from the banking system to the financial markets. Number two. Institutional trading is the kind of trading done by banks, large hedge funds, large companies. But unlike the retail trader or investor, these entities don't go to the stock market when they trade. They use a parallel market called the OTC market, which stands for over-the-counter market. This is the market we just talked about, which is about 10 times larger than the, than the entire stock market and larger than the global GDP. Institutional players can act in the OTC markets via phone or email in a more direct way. Even though the OTC market is not accessible to the retail trader, he can still access derivatives in the normal market. Number three, not all institutional traders have the goal of making money. This might seem weird in the first moment, but in many institutions, like big banks for example, the primary goal of the trader is to reduce the risk of operations that the institution already has. For example, a bank makes money by earning interests with loans. These loans have a risk, which is the default risk. To reduce this risk, the bank goes to the financial markets and transfers this risk to other investors using the derivatives market. In other words, the bank doesn't necessarily want to make money in the financial markets. It wants to transfer the risk from its credit operation to other investors. The job of a bank trader is to use the derivatives market to mitigate the credit risk as much as possible. What's interesting about this is that the retail traders can use the same techniques to make money instead of just transferring the risk, which is something that you'll learn in the institutional trading books I'm writing. Number four, there are mainly three types of institutional trading. They are speculation, arbitrage, and hedging. Speculation is mainly done by funds where they need to conjecture about the future direction of a market like a retail trader does. Arbitrage is done by hedge funds. The concept of arbitrage is very simple. Instead of trying to determine the future direction of the market, traders will attempt to exploit the difference between two markets, which is arguably easier to do. There are several types of arbitrage done by hedge funds like long and short, convertible arbitrage, fusion arbitrage, and triangular arbitrage. Certain types of arbitrage are accessible to the retail trader like you and me, like long and short, for example. The third type of institutional trading is hedging, which has nothing to do with the type of hedging people talk about in forums, where they simply buy and sell the same financial instrument to create a redundant position. True hedging is what large banks do in order to transfer the risk of, a, of credit operations to financial markets. Hedging is done with a combination of the stock and the derivatives market, or entirely in the derivatives market, and it's also accessible to the retail trader. Number five, institutional trading is based on solid scientific theory and on many Nobel Prize winning ideas. Many of the institutional trading techniques and strategies are based on a few Nobel Prizes in economics like the Sharpie Ratio, the Modern Portfolio Theory, the autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity model, the concept of co-integration, and the black schools formula. All of these ideas have a deep origin and are the result of decades and sometimes centuries of intellectual work. This is one main difference between institutional and retail trading. 
Retail trading is usually based on an anecdotal evidence and poor scientific theory, while institutional trading is based on the best and most sophisticated th scientific theory available about finance. What's important for you to realize here is that there are many institutional trading techniques and strategies that can be used by the retail trader as well. The only requirement is the knowledge of how these strategies work and how they can be applied, which is the goal of my books about the institutional trading methods. I outlined six institutional trading strategies that the retail trader can use, and I'm doing my best to explain the complexity of these methods in the simplest way possible, which is not exactly an easy task. The institutional trading methods will be available before the end of the year for sure, but I want to release all of them in a couple of months, hopefully. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the videos I produce and wish to support the channel, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the notifications button, share the videos with your trading community, and leave your feedback below in the comment section. You can also check out my currently available price action courses in the links available in the video description or directly in my website fractalflowpro.com. There you will find a table of contents for the courses and testimonials from students. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.